Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let's acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring all of us to everlasting life. wonderful sacrament have left us as a memorial of your passion grant us we pray so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption through Christ our Lord Amen. please be seated A reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, we will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord 
and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and 12 pillars for the 12 tribes of Israel. Then, having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocausts and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it aloud to the people, who answered, All that the Lord has said, we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words of his. The word of the Lord. from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from dead works to worship the living God? For this reason, he is mediator of a new covenant since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called may receive the promised 
eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, this is the blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Today we celebrate what used to be called the Feast of Corpus Christi, the Feast of the Body and Blood of Christ. Let's go back to how it all started, the book of Exodus. Remember, the Pharaoh refused to let the people go. And finally, God said, it's time to nuke him. If he's not going to pay attention, we're going to crush him this time. So Moses went to him and said, hey, you either let the people go, or you're going to see death like you've never seen before. And what he was talking about was the fact that every firstborn in Egypt would die when the angel of death swept through the country. And it happened. But it didn't affect the Hebrew people. And remember why. Because they were celebrating a Passover meal. And they were sharing lambs that had been slaughtered. And they took the blood from the lambs and put it on the doorposts and lintels of their residences. So when the angel of death swept through Egypt, the angel passed over any of those who were housed in those homes coated with that blood, the feast of the Passover. An unbelievable miracle where God put Pharaoh in his place. He kept his word. Ramses II had to give up. The people were set free. 
and headed for the Holy Land. Okay, so many, many hundreds of years later, Jesus comes into the picture. And what you heard in the gospel is Jesus giving instructions to his followers to prepare for the Passover meal. And the Passover meal always involved the breaking of unleavened bread and other ritual parts of the service. I won't go into all the details, but he told them to get that ready. And they had what we now call the Last Supper. And you heard the words, the institution of the Eucharist. He took unleavened bread and said, this is my body. And then he took the cup of wine and said, drink from it, all of you, this is my blood. And when I got to thinking about what I'd say this evening, I thought, whoa, imagine how that must have felt for him because that had to be the lowest ebb before his crucifixion. He understood that he was going to be betrayed. He was going to be betrayed and sold, actually, by Judas. And then later, Peter, who bragged that he would never betray him, was also going to deny that he even knew Jesus. And so in the context of what had to be just sheer disappointment, he gave us that wonderful gift himself and said, this is my body and this is my blood. And the reason that I bring it up is because it involves another scripture passage, and I'm going to demonstrate that now with my prop. Thankfully, King Supers had some wonderful tomatoes. And you see there tomatoes on the vine. Remember the scripture passage? I am the vine, you are the branches. Well, think of it. These are pretty healthy tomatoes. They look really good and they're decently ripe. But what happens if you don't share in these good, well-nourished tomatoes? Well, you end up being over here, away from the healthy vine, and pretty much on your own, separated from God. Jesus told us, hey, if you're going to survive as a Christian, you've got to be over here. You've got to be part of my body, and the way that you are part of my body is to take advantage of communion. Keep in a state of grace. Come to communion, and I will always be with you. And not only just with you, in you, in a relationship that is just absolutely impossible to describe. We just know it happens. God within us. And we don't want to be out here somewhere isolated from God. So today, let's thank God. He's performed miracles throughout history, saved the Jews from the Egyptians, ended up providing the Passover that evening when the angel of death swept through Egypt, brought his people into the Holy Land. There they celebrated the Passover every year, celebrated God's majesty and power. And then Jesus used that feast to get ready for his passion. He died for us, he redeemed us, and told us, don't ever let go, be a part of that vine, and I will always be with you. And the last thing I want to share is the promise that I've talked about this week at every funeral that I presided at. I'm going ahead to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you also may be. That's what we're aiming at. We're not going to be the loner tomatoes. We're going to be the ones that are on the vine, the ones who have places reserved, and we walk from life as we know it into eternal life with God. May God be with us then. May we appreciate the wonderful gift when we come up tonight in communion, and may we live like Christians 
so that we're never separated from the vines. The other thing I thought about is the, what they do in Europe and a lot of the countries. Have you seen the fights they have on the tomato days? Here's Terry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, well, you know, you're lucky because there'd be too many witnesses. <laughs> That's it for this evening. God be with us then. We remain faithful Christians, people who are on the vine and ready anytime God calls us for that place he's prepared for us. Amen. Let's stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God. Maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ. True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For our sin and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. The Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He is sent into heaven and heaven. seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come he again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The source and summit of the Christian life is the most holy Eucharist. Rejoicing in this incomparable gift of God, we now pray. For the church, the body of Christ, that we will deepen our devotion to the Eucharistic sacrifice which gives life to the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That Christians will give gospel witness to what they receive in the Most Holy Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those who have suffered from illness or violence this year, that God's healing love will bring about health and well-being. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that are offered in our petitions to St. Joseph, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to adore the presence of Christ in the Blessed Sacrament, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are ill, especially those listed in our prayer intention book, those listed in our prayer request ministry, and for Robert Ortega, Barbara and Peter Davies, Don Riggs, Jack Baker, Annie Lewis, Bernadette Syke, Margaret Davis, Sandra Valenti, Lily Downs, Morgan Rodriguez, Murphy Mulligan, Mary McGillis, Jean Bentley, Francis Lestrange, Liz Gibb, Nicole Dill, Rose Pomeroy, Marilyn Thomas, Betty Soul's dad, Kathy McDowell, Karen Chenard, Yvette Horton, Neil Rome. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For all those who have died, may they live anew in the presence of the risen Christ. Darlene Handen, Ray Macy, Alice Dempsey, Dave Benson, Douglas Miller, Leroy Rome. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, for the repose of the soul of Fred Patridge, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, the gift of the Eucharist blesses us with the presence for which every human heart longs. Through the grace of the Eucharist, let us become 
more perfectly the body of Christ. Amen. Will you please be seated? Let's pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the good and glory of his name, for our good and for the of all his holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we now present. The Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And, up to the Lord. and let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just, our duty and salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. The Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross. He offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise, nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy, so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. So we approach the table of this wonderful sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities foreshadowed. Therefore, 
all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song as we proclaim. holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Samuel and Jorge, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Fred Patridge, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that Fred, who is united with your son in a death like his, may also be with him in his resurrection. Remember all our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on all of us, we pray, that with Mary, Joseph, the blessed apostles, all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, that we too may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command informed by divine teaching we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The, the kingdom, kingdom the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer one another signs of our peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, and only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let's pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your body and blood. We we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We have a few announcements. This Sunday is the Feast of Corpus Christi, as Father has said. Between our 10 o'clock and our noon Mass, we will be having a Eucharistic adoration. So you're welcome to join us for that, and um, we will conclude the adoration right before the noon Mass. The family group will be meeting next Sunday, June 13th, after the 10 a.m. Mass on the playground down at the Ed Center. Please join this group. They'd really like to get more members, and people that have families are really welcome to join. The youth who will be attending the Steubenville of the Rockies on July 4th weekend are offering an ice cream fundraiser in the front of the church next weekend um, after all the masses, June 12th and 13th. Please help the youth with their costs of their retreat by donating generously. And if you would like to enroll your father, living or deceased, in our Father's Day Novena, there are prayers and donation envelopes on the back counter. And the St. Joseph gift shop will start opening next weekend, and they will be open every other weekend after that. Thank you. And there'll be plenty of tomatoes for sale, too, on the, <laughs> the day that we decide to take care of Terry. The Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. And may God bless and keep all of us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's go in love and peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a good week, everyone. You too, Father.